Um, this is just kind of a quick prequel to my video series on building or maintaining country roads. And this is going to be a series based on basically my experience building this road and observing it and maintaining it for the last eight years. So I'm standing at kind of a, a line here and there's a culvert right there that carries water right here across the road and dumps it off there. And there's a ditch all the way up this side of the road. And if you can see behind me, you can probably tell that this road is, is crowned. So it's actually higher in the middle and it kind of goes down to both sides. So when water hits it, the water goes like this and half of it goes in the ditch and half of it goes off the side of the road. Now from this point down, there's no ditch for hundreds of feet. And this is a section I just showed in a recent video when I was talking about doing this series. And that's because the geology, hydrology, geohydrology, whatever, is entirely different from this point down than it is from that point up. So after this goes down hundreds of feet without a ditch, there's another section where, again, there's a ditch and a crowned section of road for a short distance. What this road building philosophy is about is having adequate tools and choosing the right um, road profile and strategy for each area of your road. A lot of people will make the mistake of thinking that it's all about um, eliminating inside ditches and using outsloping, which means that the whole road slopes out to the side and if any water hits it, it just sheets off and goes off the side. Really what I can say from my experience is I would 100% recommend eliminating any ditch that you can eliminate. If you don't need a ditch, then don't put one in because it's just going to require more maintenance and when they fail, they tend to damage your road a lot because they have all this energy stored in the water and you're concentrating water and once you concentrate water, it has the potential to do damage. So if it jumps that ditch, it's going to eat its way across your road. So Ian Corey uh, from Lolita's Garden YouTube channel left a comment today about just asking like what's the deal like if you if you don't have a ditch what's the difference between the water jumping out of a ditch and just having a bunch of water come off your hillside and run across your road and screw it up. Well the answer to that is that um, there are areas where water does not come off the hillside. So from here down for hundreds of feet, there's virtually no water that ever makes it off of this hillside onto the road. But back behind me, there's large quantities. I mean, there's basically vernal springs. So after a really heavy rain, you'll walk out and there'll be like a bunch of water just coming out of the ground right on the side of the road. Uh, one place is almost like a little creek when it rains really super hard. Maybe every three years that, that little section just starts flowing. So again, if it doesn't do that, there's no reason to have a ditch and there's all kinds of reasons not to have a ditch. Now there's some kind of um, guidelines for choosing whether or not you should have an inside ditch or not. And the basic rule of thumb is if there's grass up here, then you want a ditch because grasslands don't absorb as much water. They're not as sponge-like and a forest is really good at stopping water from flowing and percolating it down and having it go deeper and further, so it's really going down into the water table and moving out. Well, I can tell you that if I had followed those rules, I'd have a whole bunch of ditch that I didn't need, and I would have no ditch where I did need it. Like behind me here, there's a, a, quite a bit of forested land. Some of it is, some of it isn't. But the place where the most water comes out of the ground and would be literally flowing across the road like a small creek is heavily forested. So there you go. Take home message, if you are going to retrofit um, or redesign or cut a new road, whatever you're doing, take any opportunity you can get when there's a lot of water moving, um, after, right after or, or during a really heavy rain, or maybe it's a snow melt for you when all of a sudden you get these heavy thaws and you get a lot of water moving and walk your road and observe, especially on the uphill side. I mean, you can just observe what water's doing, period or you know, where, where you're gonna put your road. And I would literally recommend actually flagging this stuff. You know, get some pieces of rebar or whatever you got and, and flag the stuff and take notes. And also if you're, if you're doing anything serious like a road design, you might as well just map the thing out. Like get a, a long tape, get a 50 foot tape or 100 foot tape and measure the whole thing, put in landmarks and then start writing that stuff down. But definitely mark it. I don't know. For me, my memory wasn't good enough to just remember everything. So I marked everything. That allowed me to pretty much 100% predict 
predict and know what was going to happen with water. And it's been the same, you know, every year that it rains super hard, it's the same because I was able to walk this road for two years in a row before we did any of the retrofitting. And at that time it was not drivable in the winter. I mean, you could, you could rip through it with a four wheel drive, but we never used that because we knew it would just tear the road to pieces and, and we'd have more of a mess to fix later. So actually most of the first two winters and almost all of the first winter we walked in and out um, all year, half a mile. And we're carrying like sheets of plywood and office chairs and all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, anyway, yeah, so that's the take home message, really important. And that's really why I made this video today is just to get you thinking a little bit about that stuff, encourage you to observe your road bed, even if it's one you already have and you've never kind of like thought of that very much start looking because you may have a ditch that you don't need, for instance. And if you were doing any major road work at some point, you could just have it, you know, filled in and, and get rid of it. I had two places on this road where they cut long ditches. And this one right here behind me, behind the camera, um, I had just turned my back for like almost no time at all. And the guy was on the dozer and had already cut all the way down. And I made them fill that back in. And then another one, they talked me into putting a ditch in and then I sat on it over a week, a rainy weekend when they weren't working. And on, when they came back to work, I was like, nope, fill that ditch in. It was a lot of ditch. It cost extra money to fill it back in. Very glad I did it. It's just another ditch I don't have to maintain that would be getting full of sticks and leaves and clogging up and flowing over the road and messing it up, you know, every couple of years. So we'll get into all the nitty gritty of it and tour the entire road and I'll show you what I've done. And um, it's been, I think eight years since the road was put in or something like that. And so I've been observing, driving and maintaining this road for that amount of time. And I can tell you there's been very little maintenance. There's a few places that require regular maintenance. Guess what? They are where there's a ditch, you know, and the ditch clogs up and then it overflows. And I got some damage on the road this year because of that. So that's like the take home message. Observe your road, look at the water. The other one is just start looking at country roads, period. If you drive on dirt roads, start looking at them, look at what kind of damage there is or isn't. If you get lucky enough to drive on something that looks really good all the time, well, there's a reason for that, you know, and you could start trying to figure out what those reasons are. Most roads are not great. Well, most of them aren't well designed in the first place. And then if you get an op a machine operator that doesn't know what they're doing, they can just screw it up in, in you know, one pass. And, and uh, that's happened up here quite a few times to my neighbors and to the ranch road. And just start looking at why those things are. When I first started um, thinking about planning this road, I knew nothing about roads and dirt roads. And I would just drive on them and they were messed up. And I was just kind of like, oh yeah, they get messed up because they're made of dirt and you just add more gravel or scrape them a little bit. You know, I had no clue, but now when I go drive on them, I'm just like looking, oh, well, they, you should do change this and change that. And, um, you know, you could start to see the reasons why, but, you know, just start thinking that direction, but mostly observe your road area and especially the uphill side for seeing what the water's doing. That's it for now. I think it's going to be probably summer till we get to that video series at best because I have uh, tons of grafting and ax videos I want to do for the cordwood challenge and for grafting season. And that's going to run into, you know, probably early summer or something like that. <clears throat> All right.